Blender Octane 10 minute material video. We're gonna learn about texture displacement and how we can displace something with texture. Super easy, 10 minutes. Let's go. All right, first thing here, what I'm gonna do is just get a basic scene here. We don't got a lot of time. I'm gonna drag in a plane, scale it up. Then I'm gonna go into edit mode, just making a quick background here. Extrude Z, extrude that up. Click here on the middle, control B. Soften that out, tab out of that, object, shade smooth. Boom, scale that on the X. There we go, jump into my camera, that looks cool camera i'm gonna just kind of scroll that up just a little bit more there all right well then i'm gonna do is just add in a cube right in the middle of our scene gz that up scale that down maybe rotate it something like that okay that's looking pretty cool make sure you got your octane all fired up and signed in i like that that looks fantastic i'm using an hdri Again, if you do not know how to set up Octane, I have some other videos that will show you guys how to do that. I'll post them at the end of the video here. So quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna go in, click on my cube, and I'm gonna load in a texture. Now, I'm gonna use the universal texture material here. Let's kind of scroll this over a little bit so we can get a little bit more real estate to work with. So I'm gonna drag in a displacement map that I have from the good old famous JS placement site, which is not up anymore, but I did find an archive site that actually had a copy of it. I'll put the link down if I can remember. So what I want to do is quickly throw this into the albedo so you guys can see what we're working with and what it looks like here. Let's let it buffer in our, it will need to buffer these in. Okay, quickly, that's what it looks like. Also on my queue, let me scroll down to normals and auto smooth normals. What I'm also going to do with this cube here, just to make it symmetrical, go into tab, edit put in a loop cut dead center right select faces select this face delete vertices come back here put a mirror modifier on this cube mirror modifier bink so now we got something that's going to be symmetrical right what i want to do to pump up the details and stuff on this here this is what it looks like i'm going to go ahead and unplug it there now it's going to slow down my system a little bit here especially while i'm screen recording but just zap zap out scroll down here to the bottom of this thing here and we got displacement we're going to plug this rgb image into displacement it's immediately going to turn red no big deal press shift a and then go down to octane displacements texture displacement pop that in between and there it is we actually do have some displacement on this cube it's just very very faint let's see if we can pick it up here it's very 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 faint there okay so to bring that in, all we're going to do is just click on this. I'm going to go 0.2 and there it is. Now we can see, let me zoom out a little bit. We can see it actually happening here. Let me go ahead and turn that on and reset that, turn it back on. Okay, good. Now you notice it's kind of split apart, right? So just take the mid level and just slide this mid level until it closes back right till we get it to close back boom it looks like it's overlapping a little bit there too so kind of something right about there i think let me go ahead and jump out of the camera and zoom in here a little bit closer okay so that's what that's looking like and now to control the amount of detail in this we can crank this level of detail up this is an 8k uh, map i can crank this up here but i'm not going to do it at the moment because it's going to really lag my viewport right so right now it's at 1080 but we can crank, we're gonna crank this up here at the end. But what I wanna do here is show you how we would resize this here. Like maybe I want a little bit more detail. So what I could do is come in here, go to uniform UV transform here. And then if we click this here, scale, let's say like 0.2, okay. And then it kind of scales it down. Like, see, we got that, that's happening. Some a little bit different opposite. We can go bigger, maybe three. And obviously that doesn't look that great, but I like, I like 0.2. That's cool. But you know, we, we can see a lot of repeating happening, right? The human eye is very good at picking up repeating. So one way we can also get around that, let me jump into the shader tab. We're at five minutes. Okay, we're almost done here. Um, I'm really liking the way that looks, but if we jump into the shader tab here and I'm gonna scroll this over here, and then I'm gonna jump into the UVs, UV editor. Okay, kind of scroll in a little bit so we can see what we're doing there. And then if I jump into edit, okay, select all faces we can grab here press a over here and then we can just kind of like zoom this down in and right so again we're seeing lots of more repeating there because i'm probably thinking a little bit too small or we can zoom that up 
Let me go back on here and put the scale back to one. And already um, the viewport is a little bit laggy for me. Okay, now we can come in here and let's scale this down. Then let's let jump out of that, tab out of that, back to object mode. Yeah, and I already went down too far because now it's actually uh, repeating there. So let me go ahead and undo that. Just press undo. We're already at three minutes, running out of time here. And let me just go ahead and scroll this back in. So maybe something like right about there. Okay. And then tab out. That looks okay. Doesn't look the greatest, but it, you know, just to get the point across what we're doing here. I'm going to actually just rotate the cube. I'm going to jump into what was it here? I'm going to jump into local and then I'm going to go rotate Z just to see if we can get something, a different look here. What's looking like on the opposite side here. It's a very just clean, minimal, greeble design. It's nothing too crazy, right? This side looks pretty interesting. I think we'll kind of like plop it right about here on this side, something like this. All right, so we're coming up on the two, two minute mark. Let's go ahead and just quickly set up our scene here. Let's just kind of rotate the HDRI here. I'm going to jump out, go into my object world. Again, if you don't know how to set up your HDRI, I do have a video on that here. I'll also post that at the end so we can uh, figure out how to set up your HDRI. Go back to world lighting, I'll click on my world tab. And then here I'm on texture. I'm using HDR texture environment. If you want to use a daylight, you click on daylight. There's our daylight system. Ooh, daylight system is really strong, but I'm going to go back into my texture environment. And since I connected it, it disconnected it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that back into texture. And quickly, you can see the node set up texture environment with an RGB image set to power uh, one gamma one. And then here I can control the rotation of it. So let's just go ahead and uh, rotate this guy around a little bit. Let me zoom out so we can see there and i'm really liking the way this is already looking transform just kind of just maybe swing this to the other side here just to quickly see some different looks it's kind of hard with it lagging a little bit so much in my report but hold down shift also to to get a little bit more fine oh i'm actually liking that a little bit there i'm liking that right there let's go ahead we're coming up on one minute kind of just move that a little bit ever so slight right about there i think i like that all right let's jump into the camera there let's see what that's looking like now what i did when i did do js displacement i did was able to uh export out a color version of the same map here so i'm going to go ahead and plug that in just for color okay there's my universal material let me quickly turn this off here while i bring that in all right so we got that in i'm going to go back to my other layout screen i had more space over there turn that off scroll back up to the top here is my cube a uh, texture map and then i'm going to go ahead and plug that into the albedo and let's go ahead and turn that back on and there is our 10 minutes so we're now going to just set up our render here we're done um, i think i'll add a little bit of depth to field we probably don't really need any depth of field because there's nothing really in the background to to really oh that looks really cool i'm liking that thinking though i would like to tweak on the lights a little bit but we're just out of time so if anything i think i'm gonna bump up i'm gonna bump up the HDRI because we were out of time. Okay. Go to world really fast. Power. Let's go like 1.6. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I like that. And then quick little trick here that I like to do because uh, I, I do a lot of filming with the camera, right? And I always use false colors to check if anything is ex overexposed. So if you scroll all the way down here where it says raw, click on that. You can go to false color here and we can get a false color readout. So red means clipping orange is close to clipping yellow is bright you know everything else and uh super purple will be underexposed basically clipping the black so i think that's good we're looking nice there false colors check that out it's really cool to work with go back to raw setting depth of field so let's go to our camera settings now i'm going to click on my camera and we're also going to bump this up the, the the resolution you'll see here in a moment camera here we can also tweak the exposures but my camera's not even on so i'm going to turn the camera viewer on okay there it is and it's not set up here so i'll scroll down a little bit it looks like it's in linear it is in linear right here response type i want to set that from linear off to srgb which is what we can see on our computer monitors and stuff there's all kinds of different film looks here too boom there it is nice and super clean if anything I'll go down a little bit more. We got the post-processing. I'm going to click on that. Um, I'll turn this bloom power up to like 100. Okay. And then maybe turn the clip to like 0.5. Let's see what that looks like a little bit. 
just a little bit of bloom, which is almost unnoticeable, but it's fine. And then what I think I'm going to do with the camera selected also just turn on a little bit of depth of field just to have some type of depth of field going on here. Okay. Uh, 2.8. So autofocus, I'm going to click on autofocus. We'll choose cube. And then I'm going to, we're just going to probably leave it right about there. Uh, uh, aperture of 0.89. I think that's looking good. Sweet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to go back on the material, clicking on the cube, make sure we're on object. And then I'm going to crank up the displacement and I'm going to crank up the displacement. Depending on your computer, you might be able to work with it. I, I tried earlier and it was just slowing my viewport down so much. I'm going to go all the way to 8K. I'm going to crank it all the way to 8K. And if anything, I want to click on this background and just add a, a, a quick material onto the back here, guys. We didn't add anything on there. OK, now let's go ahead and quickly save this rendering settings. I'm going to go over here to rendering settings and just to get a general view of what is looking like. I'm going to just do 100 samples, which is close to the 100. I'm going to go 888. Then I'll take this GI clamp, put that down to maybe 10. Turn on adaptive sampling, and that's we'll call it there. Go ahead and save one more time. I'm just going to render out one, so I'll catch you guys once it's done. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. There it is for, you know, 10 minutes. Not bad. You know, I'm going to go back and really spice it up add a couple more lights in there, really bring it out, do some post-processing on it. And ultimately it's going to be the thumbnail of this video, or you may have already seen the thumbnail for this video, but I just wanted to show you quick what you can do with Octane Blender displacement. You notice we didn't subdivide. We didn't do any subdivision whatsoever to that plane. Crazy, huh? So if you do not know how to set up your Octane, take a look at this video. If you want to set up an HDRI, take a look at this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.